Their Excellencies, Mr. Errol Charles, Acting Governor General of St. Lucia, and Mrs. Anicia Charles, Speaker of the House of Assembly, Mr. Claudius Francis, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Philippe J. Pierre, Cabinet Ministers and Members of Parliament, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Cabinet Secretary, recipients of the 2023 King's Birthday Honours and their guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant afternoon to you. It is my pleasure to be your Chair of Proceedings and I will be accompanied by our orator, Mrs. Natalie Jolie Fannis. Today we are here to celebrate our nine recipients of the Majesty, the King's Birthday Honours for 2023. It is your day, and collectively, as a nation, we celebrate you. The most excellent order of the British Empire is the most recent among the sovereign's orders of chivalry. It was first instituted by King George V on June 4, 1917, to reward services to the war effort by the thousands of civilians and servicemen in support of positions during World War I. Also associated with this order is the British Empire Medal, BEM, which was originally awarded for loyal and meritorious service by civilians and military personnel during the Great War over 100 years ago. Since the institution of the most excellent order of the British Empire, the late majesty Queen Elizabeth II made subsequent alterations to the statutes of ordinances of the order so that awards are now presented to those who make distinguished or notable contributions in their own specific areas of activity or for achievement or services to their community or country. His Majesty King Charles III, as sovereign of the order, appoints all members on the advice of his government in St. Lucia. Accordingly, St. Lucia's quota for the 2023 King's Birthdays Honor List was the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, the CMG, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, the CBE, Officers of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, Members of the Order of the British Empire, MBE, and British Empire Medal, BEM. I will now invite our orator, Mrs. Natalie Jolie Fanse Fannes, sorry, to the podium, and also Ms. Adelina Alexander, Secretary of the Chancery, to proceed with the investiture of the recipients. Good afternoon. Order of St. Michael and St. George. Most Reverend Archbishop Gabriel Malzer for service to the community. Most Reverend Archbishop Gabriel Malzer has been a dedicated servant to the Christian community, both locally and regionally, since his ordination as a priest in 1985. Appointed Bishop of Roseau in 2002 and later Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Castries in 2022, Most Reverend Archbishop Malzer has played a pivotal role in the spiritual and theological development of his region. His contributions to the formation of the Regional Seminary of St. John Vianney and Uganda Martyrs in Trinidad and Tobago, where he taught theology, have been instrumental in shaping future clergy. Wildly respected as a theologian, he has been leading the Antilles Ep Episcopal Conference, AEC, as its president since 2017. His leadership and scholarly contributions have significantly enriched the church's mission and outreach. Most Reverend Archbishop Malzier's enduring commitment to faith, education, and regional ecclesiastical leadership stands as a testament to his profound impact on the Christian community. For committed service to the community, Most Reverend Archbishop Gabriel Malzier 
is being awarded the Order of St. Michael and St. George Medal. Father Michel will accept on his behalf. Please give another round of applause to Archbishop Gabriel Marze. Officer of the British Empire, OBE, Mr. Gabriel Barry Prosper. Can we please ask Mr. Prosper to stand? Mr. Gabriel Barry Prosper is an exemplary and highly successful businessman. Born in the town of Soufre, Mr. Prosper did not have the opportunity to attend secondary school. Undeterred by this, he self-educated through numerous correspondence courses in electrical engineering, air conditioning, refrigeration, and home appliances. In 1981, he founded Muffs Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Company Limited, demonstrating remarkable discipline, commitment, and ambition. Mr. Prosper is widely recognized for his contributions to both the public and private sectors, installing air conditioning systems in prominent buildings, such as the financial complex, the infrastructure complex at Union, the car park at the waterfront, the Darren Sami cricket ground, and the Uranora arrival hall. His expertise also extends to private sector installations, including the Quartz Building in Marisil and the Massey Supermarket at La Tunie Viewfort. Mr. Prosper's journey from self-education to industry leadership serves as a powerful testament to his resilience and dedication. For service to the community, Mr. Gabriel Barry Prosper is being awarded the Officer of the British Empire Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Mrs. Bonnie Lawrence Zephyrin for services to community development. Mrs. Bonnie Lorenz Zephyrin has dedicated 45 years to entrepreneurship and property development, profoundly impacting St. Lucia's economic landscape. In 1975, she founded the Windsor Galleries Company, specializing in the design and sculpting of decorative columns, balustrades, garden fountains, statues, and ornaments. Four years later, she and her husband, Mr. Edwin Zephyrin, co-founded Viking Traders Limited. This food and beverage manufacturing company produces a variety of award-winning products using locally sourced raw materials, achieving household recognition both locally and internationally. Mrs. Zevrin's visionary spirit continued with the establishment of Top of the World Apartments in 1989. Her expansion into the southern part of the island in 2002 led to the creation of Castles in Paradise, a development featuring 14 villas and a condominium complex. Today, Viking Traders Limited, Top of the World Apartments, and Castles in Paradise collectively employ over 77 St. Lucians permanently, with an additional 40 employed during construction phases. Mrs. Zephyrin's legacy is one of innovation, dedication, and community enrichment. For contributions to community service, development, and outreach programs towards alleviating poverty, Mrs. Bonnie Lawrence Zephyrin is awarded the Officer of the British Empire Medal.
member of the most excellent order of the British Empire, MBE, St. Paul Raymond Vaughan Louis Fernand. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. For committed humanitarian service in education and commerce. St. Paul Raymond Vaughan Louis Fernand, a distinguished educator and community leader, was awarded a fully sponsored government scholarship to attend St. Mary's College, and on completion, he attended the St. Lucia Teachers College. At 19, he became the principal of Canary's Primary School, and a year later, he transformed the ancillary combined school as head teacher. In January 1970, he successfully established 4-H clubs across St. Lucia, significantly impacting numerous communities. By 1974, Louis Fernand was the coordinator for teacher training centers in Castries, Soufrier, and Viewfort. He served as Director for Peace Corps Volunteers in St. Lucia in 1975. In 1976, he revitalized the 4-H movement and the Lawas and La Marguerite Flower Festivals as Senior Community Development Officer. Throughout his career, Louis Fernand pursued studies in community and social work in Winnipeg, Chicago, Jamaica, and Israel, and received training at the University of the West Indies in stage management, pottery, and painting. He transitioned to the private sector in 1980, serving as administrative director of his shareholding company for 15 years and owner of data machines for five years until Ill, Ill health intervened. He has contributed to 17 statutory boards and currently serves as, as a commissioner of the National Utilities Regulatory Commission and president of the St. Benedict Church Council. His service includes roles in the Public Service Commission, National Bank, Castry City Council, National Development Committee, Cultural Development Foundation, and Radio St. Lucia. For service to the community, St. Paul Raymond Vaughan Louis Fernand is being awarded the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire Medal. A round of applause for Mr. Louis Fernand. <laughs> Father Almiraj Thomas Penigilapati. <laughs> Better known as Father Raj. <laughs> for committed humanitarian service. Father Almiraj Thomas Penigilapadi left his homeland about 26 years ago when he became a priest in the Archdiocese of Castries. During his tenure, he has demonstrated great leadership and commitment to the clergy. Notably, his role as parish priest at the Bocage Parish from 1987 to 2006, the St. Michael's Parish in La Richeuse from 2006 to 2012, and St. Peter's Parish in Denry from 2012 to 2014, highlight his distinguished dedication to his studies within the church community. Father Penny Gilapadi further expanded his educational journey when he pursued a certificate course in catechetic from 2014 to 2015. Upon completion in 2015, he was transferred to Sacred Heart Mar Parish in Marsha, where he served till this year? This year. Last year. So I know Father has moved on. <laughs> from Marsha Parish. For committed humanitarian service, Father Raj is being awarded the most excellent order of the British Empire Medal. He's asking to be returned to the Marsha Parish. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
British Empire Medal, BEM, Mr. Stephen Augustine, for services to music and the arts. Mr. Stephen Augustine, better known as Steve, has been a successful entrepreneur for 43 years, providing an essential service to the community as a barber. Beyond his professional contributions, he has been a pivotal figure in the renowned Diamond Steel Band from the community of Marsha. Demonstrating his commitment to the arts, Mr. Augustine initiated the annual celebration of musicians on November 22nd, St. Cecilia Day, organizing a full day exhibition that showcases local talent. He diligently seeks sponsorship, coordinates with police to secure road closures, and arranges a stage and sound system for the event, ensuring musicians have a platform to perform for the public. His efforts have greatly supported the grooming and development of young men in the community and have significantly promoted the arts. Mr. Augustine's sterling service and unwavering support for local musicians highlights his dedication to enriching the cultural fabric of his community. For national, public, and community service, Mr. Stephen Augustine is being awarded the member of the British Empire Medal. Mrs. Carola Henry for committed humanitarian service. And she's represented today by Mr. Gaspar Henry, her husband. <laughs> Mrs. Carola Henry has worked alongside her husband, Gaspar Henry, passionately dedicating herself to sourcing supplies and preparing an average of 90 meals twice a week for those in need in the Castries region. Feeding the Poor Ministry, a charitable organization founded in 2006, has been unwavering in its commitment to serving marginalized individuals by providing meals to the poor, homeless, and senior citizens. Initially, the Henrys self-financed their humanitarian efforts, but over time, they have garnered support from various entities and individuals, enabling them to expand their reach. In addition to her work with the meal program, Mrs. Henry also devotes herself to weekly home care visits for elderly residents in low-income areas of Castries, offering essential support and companionship. Mrs. Henry's tireless dedication and compassion have significantly impacted the lives of countless individuals, embodying the true spirit of service and community. For contribution to community service, development, and outreach programs towards alleviating poverty, Mrs. Carola Henry is awarded the British Empire Medal. Thank you, Mr. Henry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Cuthbert Walter James, for service to the community. Can I sing a better known as? Mr. Cuthbert Walter James, affectionately known as Colady to many of us, has made a sterling contribution to the community through his dedication to barbering, grooming young men, and providing a safe recreational environment. 
His barbering skills for over 38 years have served as a cornerstone for mentorship, guiding countless young men toward positive personal development. Beyond his professional work, Mr. James is a passionate supporter of the arts, particularly in celebrating St. Cecilia Day and promoting local musicians. His efforts in organizing and supporting musical events have enriched the cultural life of the community. His legacy is one of dedication, mentorship, and a profound impact on the lives of many within the community. For service to the community, Mr. Cuthbert Walter James is being awarded the British Empire Medal. Mr. Gregor Graf Filgens for contribution to community infrastructural service and development. <laughs> Mr. Gregor Graf Filgens is recognized as the oldest long distance walker who has undertaken the remarkable feat of walking around the island multiple times in the years 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2023. <laughs> the now 83-year-old initiated the concept, my apologies, 85 year old <laughs> initiated the concept of the long distance walk around the island as a national independence activity. His vision was to inspire young people to channel their energy positively by walking against crime. Through his dedication and perseverance, Mr. Filgens has motivated countless individuals to engage in constructive activities and foster community spirit. His commitment to this cause has not only promoted physical fitness, but also underscored the importance of unity and proactive efforts in addressing social issues. For contribution to community, infrastructural service, and development, Mr. Gregor Graf Filgens is being awarded the British Empire Medal. Congratulations once again to all of the recipients. Let me congratulate the deserving solutions who this afternoon were honored by his, his, his Majesty the King through the government of St. Lucia. Anytime I come to these ceremonies, I feel proud. In fact, I feel proud to be a solution. I feel proud to be able to share with the rich history of these honorees this afternoon. I happen to know every one of them <laughs> very well. And I can tell you they are deserving of that honor. <clears throat> I want to start with Mrs. Zephyrin. Mrs. Zephyrin was one of the first people who spoke about food security. When I was the Minister of Commerce, Mrs. Zephyrin almost fought with me <laughs> to get farmers to plant pepper <laughs> and to get involved in agriculture for Viking industries. I've never seen a lady so committed to the business of agriculture and agro-processing like Ms. Mrs. Zephyrin. 
And truth is, it has come down, and I always speak about generational wealth. It has come down to her family. Her sons are also involved. And they also put a lot of pressure on me for that. So they've inherited from her their mother. <laughs> so I think Mrs. Zephyr is, is deserves it. Mrs. Zephyr has always, always been a consummate business lady. And she always spoke about stop, stop the importing. Why are we importing so many things? Why aren't we using our, our local resources? She's um, she's fought for that, and now with all the problems of food security, I guess visionaries like Ms. Zephyrin always knew before. So I think she deserves the honor, and she deserves recognition from the government of people's solution. <laughs> Archbishop Marze, I was speaking to him up to, and by the way, I want to really express my condolences also to the, and the, to the the clergy on the death of Cardinal Felix. And I was speaking to Archbishop Marte on Thursday. And in fact, I really am saddened that I did not go to see the, 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 the Cardinal. Because we were speaking about it in the morning, and somebody called and said that the, arch, the, the Cardinal was, doing very, was getting very low. And I said to him, can I go to see him? He said, yes, you can come, you, you, can, you can go. But I didn't leave the office, and I guess I will have to leave it at. I did not leave the office at the time. I got consumed in the business, in the secular business of running the country, and I did not go, go to see him at the time, although I had seen him before. And it really, because I have some fond memories of Cardinal, Cardinal Felix. If there is one man, I think, that epitomizes what a spiritual advisor should be. I think Cardinal Felix is one. And I deeply regret I did not see him on that Thursday when I was speaking to Bishop Manzi and the papal nuncio. I really regret I didn't see him, but may his soul rest in perfect peace. Archbishop Manzi is also a man of great spiritual integrity. We've had some, but what is his, mo what I like him the most for is he's in touch with reality. He understands the world, he understands the, the role of, of the church, the, the role of Christianity, and I'm sure his spiritual leadership will lead St. Lucia to higher heights. Congratulations to, Arch, to Archbishop Gabriel Mazze. <clears throat> Von Refinance, I still have a picture at my home that he, he painted for me. That isn't why, that's not why he got this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in fact, I didn't see that written there. Um, Louis Finance is also a painter, an artist, right? And he's done many things. He's done many, many things. And I was surprised to hear you as a principal at 19. Principal of the Academy School, so I was saying to, to, to the speaker, if it's a principal at 19, and he reminded me that people used to come, used to do that, used to become teachers and principals at a rather early age. But for him to do it at 19 is a feat that I think CEO will be able to, to, to follow. And the variety of service, of his services, serving on several boards, and, and in our business, when you can serve on so many boards, you have to have something to offer. And Mr. Mr. Finance has done that, and I think he must. He should share his experiences now with younger people. With people, and younger people should learn from gentlemen of that nature. So I think, Mr. Louis Finance, I want to thank you for your service, and also tell you to share that experience with the young people of Saint Lucia. Thank you very much. <coughs> Father Raj, I have known him for some I wouldn't try to do like Mrs. Fanis and pronounce his and pronounce his name. I'll call him after all these years. After all these years. <laughs> <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> I will call him Father Raj. <laughs> Father Raj was in my parish for a very, very, very long time. Till he was transferred, much to my chagrin in twenty fifteen. I seen to Father um Michel that I did express 
migrate that the high authorities that she had moved in. But in, in, in that business, I understand that you have to move where you are, where you are sent. So, where you are needed. <laughs> where you are needed. But I'm sure Father Raj is needed in, in Shuzel. Father Raj did fantastic work in, in, in Marsha. Father Raj was persistent, consistent, and then um, I know that he, he is missed in Marsha, but the, the people of Shuzel have gained what the people of Marsha experienced for, for several years. So as my parish priest, Father Raj, I want to thank you for your service to the community. <clears throat> this morning I saw Steve driving his van. I forgot he was coming here today. <laughs> so, and I want to tell him that he'll be happy to know that the Diamond Steel Orchestra is going to be revived. He'll be very happy to know that the Diamond Steel is going to be revived. And I'm sure the young people there will... will um, the young people there will call on him to assist them in the, as the orchestra is being re revived. Again, very simple people. Still very simple, unassuming, but powerful. An example of the, tip, the typical what a solution citizen should be. Unassuming, principled, and making a contribution. So Steve, I thank you. <laughs> And I suspect Gaspar Henry planned to be here instead of his wife. <laughs> Feed the poor. Feed the poor ministry. Gaspar, Henry and his wife, dedicated to ensure that people get a meal at least once, once a day, doing that on his own till some other folks decided to join him. Again, very unassuming, doing what they have to do to assist their fellow men. Mr. Mr. Henry, I want you to thank your wife and tell her that I hope you did not plan for her not to be here, but tell her that we are, we are very happy at what she's doing and hope she can continue in the distant future. <clears throat> then, call it D. <laughs> Any man who can survive as a barber in the times of Rastafarian is good. <laughs> <laughs> but Kuli D has, has survived. Again, unassuming, regular. You know, Senusha has many unsung heroes. A lot of people who very quietly do their, make their contribution to the society without any fuss, without any fanfare, very quietly. And Holy Day is an example of that. Very quiet, doing his thing, earning his living, mentoring young people, staying above the free whilst he's making his contribution. Unassuming, but powerful. Again, my comment, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Phil Jens, I will see you between 85 and 86, right? <laughs> because you very much protested when, you, when they said you were 83. In the days when people don't want to walk from, from a car park to Bridge Street, this guy walks around the island. So you can, you can imagine. And, and if you look at his, his, his posture, if you look at the way he looks, you can see this, this, this is a, a gentleman who takes care of his body. Um, I think walking against crime is not only walking against crime is a very powerful message, but, but I think walking generally is both a healthy, a, healthy, a healthy thing that people should do and people should try to do. Because you hear all of the, about all these, all these diseases, them NCDs, NCDCs, where people have all kinds of problems. And most of it comes from lack of exercise. Most of it comes. And that is an example of, of, of and to walk around St. Lucia, you must have, and to do it for so many years, and to continue doing it up to the year 2023, which is last year. That means he was between 84 and 85, right, sir? In May this year, I was 85. Wow, wow, wow. So that means he did it at 84. I don't know if I can walk down the mall now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chief, 
you are uh, you are an inspiration. You are an inspiration to, to all of us. So let's oh my partner. <laughs> Barry. Barry, by the way, the air in the government is not working, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the one in my office in particular is not working. And I know you know, you wouldn't want to pull it, that's why they're working. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Barry, Barry, Barry. I bet, you know, here's a guy who did not go to, to, to secondary school, who stayed home and, and studied to become the leader. And Barry is a leader in, in the industry, a real leader in the industry. I know Barry for... <laughs> and he did not get a... And, but what made him do it is hard work, dedication, hard work, understanding, putting his head to the task. And, and if you can do these major, these major infrastructural complexes, it shows that you're world class, you're global class. And then your, I hope that you can pass on that talent. You see, that talent, if it's not passed on, it's useless. We have to pass it on. We have to pass it on. Your son is there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have to pass it on. You have to pass it on. So, Barry, you, you, I know you've worked very hard. And, you know, I have, uh, uh, let me tell you something about Barry that he might not want you to know. Barry refuses to ask you for his money. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I'm, I can tell you. Because, you know, I probably did some work for you when I used to make money. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, work, I worked for both for you and for, and for Vaughn, right? I, when I used to, you know, you know when, before I put, put myself in the business I'm in now. <laughs> um... And Barry, I should say, tell the Barry, build the people, build them, build them. He doesn't want to ask you for, 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 for his money, never. You know, but I, ask, I used to ask him for mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Barry, you, I hope that, the, the, that most people paid you. So, yeah. <laughs> so, congratulations, everyone, and do have a good evening, and let's celebrate, and let's go. Thank you, Honorable Philip J. Pierre, for your kind words. Let us give our recipients another resounding round of applause. <laughs> the Excellencies, <coughs> Mr. Errol Charles, Acting Governor General of St. Lucia, and Mrs. Anicia Charles. Speaker of the House of Assembly, Mr. Claudius Francis. Honorable Philip J. Pierre, our Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Honorable Stevenson King and spouse, our Attorney General. Other distinguished guests, our recipients of the 2023 King's Birthday Honors. Ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to thank all who have contributed to a successful investiture ceremony. Indeed, our recipients were thrilled that to have you share this special moment with them. The recipients are kindly asked to remain here for a short time with the Prime Minister and the Acting Governor General for the group photographs. I will now invite all to stand for the National Anthem of St. Lucia.